welcome to watch this video concerning the upcoming framework for FSTD training. At the time of preparing this video, the work with the regulations still continues. In other words, the final rules have not been published yet. This video is based on information that has been made public concerning the upcoming framework, so please bear in mind that the final concept may have differences to the information presented in this video. With this in mind, let's begin. Today's regulatory framework is focused on the FSTD types and levels. We talk about the tool-to-task approach. In this system, the regulations tell what FSTD type and level should be used for the training tasks. As we know, it is not too flexible. The new task-to-tool approach turns this around and puts the training needs into the center. By first determining what we need to train, we can decide the right FSTD for those training activities. The device can have a targeted fidelity towards our training needs. The new framework is based on 14 features that are all independent from each other. Each feature is graded into one of four levels. You can see an example on this column. The features and levels together are known as the FSTD Capability Signature, FCS. It is the heart of the whole framework. The FSTD Qualification Certificates will show this kind of FCS table, and the training requirements will require a certain FCS for any training task to be performed in an FSTD. There are four different levels. S stands for specific. It means very realistic simulation. R stands for representative. It means an intermediate level of realism. G stands for generic. It is the lowest level and means simple modeling of key elements only. N stands for none or not simulated. CSFSTD will give clear requirements for all these levels for all the features. This way, the FSTD qualification certificates will give objective information of the capabilities of each FSTD. It is important that you remember and understand the following information and images. Specific level means basically as good simulation as in a full flight simulator level D today. Specific means that the device accurately simulates a certain aircraft type and variant, such as an aircraft standard, block point, or tail number. For example, Airbus A320 with winglets and certain engines and avionics. Representative level means simulation of one type, but at a lower level than level S. The simulation is based on one type, for example, Airbus A320, but it may take data and elements from different variants of that type, and the level of simulation and data quality may be lower. Level G means a generic feature where simulation is characteristic of a class or group of aircraft. So level G is the only level that allows simulation being based on multiple aircraft. Let's focus a little more on discussing the generic level. What does it mean to simulate a class or a group? You are about to see examples of classes and groups. A class is defined by the pilot licenses, like single-engine piston, multi-engine piston, and so on. Airplanes within a class are different, but still they have fairly similar characteristics. If an FSTD feature is simulated at a generic level, the feature may be based on characteristics of multiple aircraft of a class. A generic feature may simulate also something that is not defined as a class, such as a multi-engine turbine airplane. Such airplanes require a pilot type rating, therefore we don't talk about a class, but of a group of aircraft. 
It is the same for even larger airplanes, such as multi-engine jets. And for helicopters, under EASA regulations, there are no helicopter class ratings, but every helicopter requires a pilot type rating. Therefore, we talk about a group of helicopters. An FSTD may simulate, for example, a light single engine helicopter. A generic feature may use data and take elements from multiple aircraft within the class or group. For example, the flight performance, like cruise speed, does not have to match a certain aircraft, but it should be characteristic to the aircraft within the simulated class or group. The FSTD qualification certificate will show the FSTD capability signature table. In addition, it will show one more column for the simulated aircraft because it may be different for different features. The training requirements will make it clear if and when the features may simulate different aircraft or when all the features should be simulating the same aircraft. For example, for type rating training, all the features should be simulating the same aircraft type. This is a draft sample of the training requirement. When the training task is performed in an FSTD, its FCS should match or exceed the required FCS for the training task. The requirement will be a long table listing all the training tasks. This example here shows only one training task. Please note that for each task, there will be different requirements for training, row for T, and testing and checking, row for T and C. The requirements for training are naturally lower than for check flights. As one example, please note the motion queuing requirement. No motion is required for training of this task but a motion at representative level is required for testing and checking. This kind of logic is used through the whole training table. The training requirements will tell that the training may be initiated in an FSTD that matches the role for training, but already before the check flight or pilot profit into check, the trainees should transfer to an FSTD that matches the role for testing and checking. The training requirements will tell when this transfer should happen. In other words, the training requirements will tell how the training program should be planned and constructed. Now, let's see the training table and the FSTD qualification certificate side by side. Comparison of the FSTD qualification certificate and the training requirement is simple. We can quickly check if the simulated aircraft is appropriate for the training. And we can compare the FSTD's capabilities to the training requirement. If the FSTD matches or exceeds the required level for each feature, it fulfills the training requirement or testing and checking requirement. This framework enables you to build and qualify a device that is suitable only to some training tasks. By selecting the desired training tasks, you know what FCS your device must have. Many of the devices will still apparently be targeted at the full type rating training and checking. Then it is very simple. You just have to have all of the features at the highest fidelity. Different training tables will be published for airplanes and helicopters for type rating training, instrument rating, multi-crew cooperation, and so on. So each training table will look something like this, except that they will be much, much longer. This new framework gives you the possibility to select or build an FSTD device that is suitable only to the training tasks that you plan to perform in an FSTD. Next, you will see an example of this. Let's assume that you plan to do only these training tasks in an FSTD, so you are not planning to do testing and checking, 
but only training of these four training tasks. These rows define the required FCS that the device should have. The FSTD should fulfill the requirements of all of these four rows, so we have to take the highest requirement from each column. Simple. This should be done one feature at a time. We start from feature number one. We are interested in these four rows. The highest requirement on these rows is R, representative level. It means that the flight deck layout and structure of our FSTD should be at representative level. Next, we do the same simple assessment for all the other features as well, and we will find the highest requirements for the training tasks that we selected. The highest requirements for each feature are here. Now we can either find an FSTD that has this FCS or exceeds that or we can start a process to build or purchase a new device that matches these training tasks that we want to do. This framework enables a lot of flexibility. You have the possibility to select the training tasks and testing and checking tasks that you want to perform in an FSTD. The training needs are in the center of this framework. The training credits are determined objectively by using the tables. It is important for anyone to understand the meaning and contents of each feature. Let's go through the features by starting from feature number two. This feature is about the primary flight control forces and hardware. Consider a fly-by-wire aircraft, such as an Airbus. On the specific level, the used hardware could be, for example, a genuine Airbus side stick. For this highest level, the flight controls should look and feel as in the aircraft, and the forces needed to move them should be realistic. For the representative level, the controls should be very similar to the real aircraft. The forces do not have to be as accurate, so at this level the side stick could be, for example, simulated, and it could be something like in this photo. For the generic level, the controls should be characteristic to the simulated aircraft group. Perhaps even a simple controller could be used. And it is also possible not to have any flight control hardware. Naturally, the training credits for such a device would be low. Feature number three then concerns the primary flight control system operation on the specific level the system logic and functions are correct, and the control surface deflections match with the aircraft. Features 2 and 3 enable many kind of devices. For example, you can have a device with generic side stick, but specific flight control system operation. This kind of device could be used to train the system functionalities like indications, automation, protections, and so on but such a combination would hardly support training of manual flight handling skills for type rating. Features number one and four also split the hardware and system operation. Number one is about the flight deck layout and structure. Level S requires a specific hardware with the correct touch and feel, something that we see today, for example, in full flight simulators. Level R means that the flight deck is partially as in the simulated type. It may be that only part of the flight deck is simulated, or the hardware is based on something of a lower level, such as touch screen panels. Feature number four is about the aircraft systems and avionics operation. This enables many kind of uh, combinations. For example, you can have representative cockpit panels, but still specific system operation. This way, the framework has the granularity that we need.
features 5, 6 and 7 concern the aircraft performance and handling, how it behaves and flies, or what is the fidelity of the ground and flight models. Performance and handling is divided into three flight regimes on ground, in ground effect, and out of ground effect. You could build a device that is generic on ground and in ground effect, but specific for flight out of ground effect. Such a device would not get training credits for takeoffs and landings, but it could be used for the training tasks happening higher in the air out of ground effect. Separation of these flight regimes is beneficial from a training aspect. Naturally, this separation is beneficial for helicopter training purposes also. This way, the real capabilities of the devices are known and the costs can be controlled by selecting only the needed levels for each feature. Features 8 through 11 concern the queuing, how our senses are stimulated through sound, motion and visual systems. The visual display queue feature concerns the visual system characteristics like the field of view, brightness, contrast and so on. Feature number 12 concerns simulation of navigation aids such as their range and directionality. Feature number 13 concerns the atmospheric phenomena, such as winds, wind shears, and so on. And finally, feature number 14 concerns the visual representation of aerodromes and other operating sites. Hopefully you see that the FSTD Capability Signature Framework is able to clarify a lot of issues that we have today. Will it solve all our problems? Unfortunately not but it will be a step forward and will enable objective and harmonized way of, of granting training credits. We are all interested in knowing how this new framework applies to the existing devices. When the new requirements are published and become effective, any initial FSTD qualification would be performed in accordance with the new CS FSTD. When qualified, the certificate would give the FCS for the device, so the device is born within the new framework. In case of older devices, you would have three different options. The most important thing is that nothing forces you to make any update or to transfer to the new framework. The easiest solution is to keep the existing qualification level as it is. If your certificate says FTD2 today, then the certificate in the future would tell that this is a legacy FTD2 device. The cer certificate would not give an FCS. You could use the device just as before, but you would not get the benefits of the new framework. You may voluntarily decide to move to the new framework, you would just need to request your authority for an assigned FCS. The authority would take the assigned FCS directly from a table in the requirements. The assigned FCS table in the requirements is based on a gap analysis between the old qualification levels and primary reference documents versus the new CSFSTD. To be able to get the assigned FCS, the primary reference document should be the latest JAR STD requirement or newer. This method allows you to easily get a certificate with an FCS. This assigned FCS does not consider your individual device's capabilities, but is based on the minimum requirements of old primary reference documents only. So you have a third option as well. You may choose to go fully into the new framework by doing the necessary paperwork and possibly needed updates. The certificate would tell the true FCS of your device, similarly as for a new device, and you would get the benefits of the new framework. It is important to notice that the certificate can only have the FCS or the type and level, but never both.
hopefully this reassures you that you have many options and no obligations to do updates. Thank you for your time.